This is David Joyner. I'm going to talk about how to use SAGE to solve differential equations. The applications we'll be looking at are applications to uh, battles, Lancaster's uh, models, also uh, zombies, zombie attacks, and Romeo and Juliet. SAGE is a free mathematics program that you can download from sagemath.org and you can also try online for free. No installation necessary. It's at sagenb.org. And at sagemath.org, uh, you can download it in, for download Sage for various platforms. You can also find lots of help and documentation there. We'll start with Lancaster's model. And we'll go to the Romeo and Juliet model, the zombie attack model is the last one. You can use differential equations to model the weather, electrical networks, spread of infectious diseases, conventional battles, populations of competing species, and even zombie attacks. And we'll look at some of these using SAGE. To start with Lancaster, uh, Lancaster was a fascinating character he uh, started building um, boats, um, motors, and components for motors for boats and for automobiles. He had his own um, automobile manufacturing company uh, for a while, and you can actually see one of his cars here in this slide. And uh, the main award for operations re research is called the Lancaster Award. He's, uh, very highly respected engineer. During World War I, he discovered a system of differential equations which predicted the outcome of um, so-called conventional, uh, simple conventional um, direct fire model battles where you can see the enemy and the enemy can see you and, and um, you uh, uh, shoot each other and there's some probability that you'll get hit and there's some probability that you'll hit an enemy. Um, with those kind of assumptions, um, Lancaster uh, developed a model to uh, um, predict uh, the outcome of aerial battles, tank battles, ship battles, uh, various other types of uh, simple warfare battles. So our assumptions are we have two armies, let's call them the X-Men and the Y-Men, and X of T is the number of troops on the X-Men side and Y of T is the number of troops on the Y-Men side. And the rate at which the soldiers in one army are put out of action is proportional to the troop strength of the enemy. So uh, as I said before, um, tank battles, uh, ship battles are, are examples. And these differential equations are called Lancaster's equations. X prime is minus A Y, Y prime is minus B X. This is a, the Lancaster model here. Sometimes A and B are called the fighting effectiveness coefficients. And uh, X naught and Y naught are the initial troop strengths. Well, Lancaster's approach was to, uh, was kind of clever. He decided, why don't we divide those two equations by each other, and then we'll get a, using the chain rule uh, here, We'll get uh, a separ uh, separable differential equation. We can solve it pretty easily. And that's what is done here. This is called the Lancaster Square Law. And um, sometimes the term BX squared is called the fighting strength of the X-Men, and AY squared is called the fighting strength of the Y-Men. So this says that the relative fighting strength is a constant. It's the Lancaster Square Law. Now let's take an example, the Battle of Trafalgar, in, which took place in 1805. Um, the initial number of ships is 27 on, the, on one side and 33 on the other side. And the losses were 0 on one side and 22 on the other side. Very famous ship battle. And uh, here's a scene from a, um, a painting called The Fall of Nelson in 1825. And you can see uh, Nelson there. He was uh, shot and died in that battle. Uh, so if we um, do some 
you know, uh, experimentation with these numbers A and B, uh, um, we can uh, we, we can derive basically a system of differential equations that roughly does model the way the Battle of Trafalgar actually transpired. And uh, so let's take a look at this system right here. We'll solve it using SAGE and uh, the method of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Our matrix A is a matrix of coefficients here. We want to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of that. And once we know them, the eigenvalues are lambda 1 and lambda 2, and the eigenvector, the corresponding eigenvectors of v1 and v2, then uh, this is a solution as long as uh, the eigenvalues are distinct. Uh, it's pretty easy in Sage to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, you just type the matrix in, like this, and then you enter eigenspaces right. Um, if you have um, a larger matrix and the eigenvectors uh, are not so simple like we have here, you might want to uh, enter here coefficients of uh, CC complex numbers, for example. Um, but anyway, in this case, it's very simple eigenvalues here and the eigenvectors, corresponding eigenvectors, are there. Type that in here, you can see it more clearly. And now we enter them into the equation that we had before for the solution to the differential equation. All we have to do is use the initial conditions to solve for C1 and C2. Uh, 27 was the initial number of ships on one side, that's equal to C1 plus, plus C2. That's why plugging t equals zero into the equation uh, here. Then uh, we use SAGE to solve that. It's pretty easy. C1 plus C2 is 27. And then this other equation is here. We ask SAGE to uh, solve it using the solve command. And it gives us C1 is 51 over 5, and C2 is 84 over 5. And that gives us these equations here. You see right away that the X-Men, this is the British side, they cannot uh, lose because both of these coefficients are positive. Whereas the Y-men, this side here, they uh, have to lose because the, their leading term is actually negative. And if you do some computations uh, just using, again, the solve command in SAGE, you can find out when um, um, when um, um, uh, the, the battle roughly is, uh, is uh, over. We, we uh, historically know that there are no losses on the British side. There are 22 losses, which means we want something around 11 on the other, on the, uh, other side. So that gives us uh, this uh, the amount of time that has elapsed, and that's consistent with the losses in the actual battle. Well, let's move on. That was uh, war. Let's move on to love, uh, Romeo and Juliet. Uh, here's uh, Romeo uh, saying wonderful things to Juliet, and then Juliet is in love with Romeo too. And um, those are famous lines from uh, from the play by Shakespeare. So we see that Romeo is madly in love with Juliet. The more that she loves him, the more he loves her. But let's uh, take Juliet's emotions a little more complicated. Um, Romeo makes her feel good about herself, um, and that makes her love him more. But if Romeo's love is, is, uh, comes on too strong, then she can react negatively. How do we model that kind of romance using differential equations? Well, uh, take R, little r of t to be the love Romeo has for Juliet, and little j of t to be the love Juliet has for Romeo. And here's R, the change in Romeo's love is directly proportional to Juliet's love for Romeo. Uh, but the change in Juliet's love is a little more complicated. If Romeo comes on too strongly, then there's this uh, negative reaction. Uh, but otherwise, um, uh, she does have some feelings that derive from Romeo's love for her, and that, that makes her feel good.
Okay, so let's take an example, try to solve this system right here with the help of Sage. We know how to solve this kind of system using eigenvalues and eigenvectors, so let's try a different method. Let's uh, see how Sage can help us solve the system using Laplace transforms. Uh, the Laplace transform changes derivatives um, in lowercase r of t to multiplication by s in the um, s domain. So we're going to just, when we take the Laplace of the lowercase letter, we're going to replace that by the um, uppercase letter. That's our kind of notational convention here. And so uh, this is this represents the Laplace of R prime. This represents the Laplace of S prime, for example. Uh, now we have two linear equations in the unknowns R of S and J of S. Put them in standard form and then you read off the coefficients and you get the augmented matrix. Here, this uh, R0 goes on the other side. If you remember, R0 was 4 and J0 was 6, and you see the 4 and the 6 here. So that's the augmented matrix for this system of equations here. How do you solve that in SAGE? Well, first you enter that matrix into SAGE. Um, there are the coefficients right there. And this SR stands for symbolic ring. So if you have a coefficient in a matrix that is a symbolic variable like we have here, this S variable is symbolic, then you're going to want not uh, the integers or the rationals or the complexes, you're going to want this symbolic ring here to be um, the ring of coefficients for this uh, matrix A. That way when you do echelon, the when you apply this method echelon form, it knows to um, uh, keep its uh, uh, operations uh, in this ring here. Now if you do echelon form, I'll show you using the sage command line here, here's uh, the matrix that we had before, type echelon form. You can see the echelon form is pretty mess messy. It's this, uh, it's this two by three matrix, but it's kind of on the messy side. It's got some, uh, it's got this identity block here in the beginning, but then there are these uh, messy coefficients here. So for example, if you take the zero tooth coefficient. Remember, in Python, um, you always start counting at zero. So this is actually the zeroth row here. And then this here, you know, this, this is the zeroth column. This is the first column. This is the second column here. So B02 is this entry in highlighted in blue, and you can see it right there. So that's, uh, that's the going to be the solution. That's going to be R of S and J of S. I'm just de denoting them by R, S, and J, S, but that's R of S and J of S. Now we take the inverse Laplace transform of R of S and we get R of T. There it is right there. That's the solution. That's Romeo's love for Juliet. And do the same thing for J of S and we get Juliet's love for Romeo. Now we plot them using the parametric plot. And you see <laughs> this, uh, this is how Romeo and Juliet's romance kind of spirals out of control. So that, that example was maybe, uh, this example here was maybe a little too extreme for those coefficients. Let's try some different coefficients. Uh, here's another example of different coefficients. And let's try doing the same thing using a different, even a, a, a yet another method of solving systems of differential equations using SAGE. This is a one line command called desolve. The only point is uh, you have to really set this up uh, very carefully. You uh, have your independent variable for the system of differential equations, and then the two dependent variables are declared as functions like this. And now you um, define your differential equations that occur in the system. Here they are. I, I just call them DE1 and D2. And then you solve your system for your dependent variables subject to these initial conditions. And uh, then you uh, get a, a pair, um, uh, but uh, you can read them off this way, it turns out, and then you can plot them. It's not so bad, uh, less extreme behavior. Uh, but I challenge you to try to find better coefficients, and uh, it's uh, fun to play with that model. Let's move on to zombies from 
love and more to zombie attacks. Um, George Romero actually um, modeled uh, the Lo Night of the Living Dead on um, a uh, book by Matheson called uh, uh, The Last Man on Earth. And, um, but he came up with this model where zombies would attack humans and um, if they bit them then the human would turn into a zombie and the humans would try to kill the zombies but couldn't unless they shot them in the brain. So that gives rise to three classes of people. There are people like you and me. Uh, this, is, this actually is derived from the SIR model in uh, biomedical um, mathematics. Um, the SIR model has susceptibles and infected and removed, and um, this model is actually used in serious uh, investigations of me medicine, but <laughs> we're um, having more fun in this talk, and we're going to talk about zombies instead. But S stands for susceptibles. That's, uh, um, that's going to be one of the dependent variables. Z, of course, is the number of zombies, and R is the removed. Now, in R in this uh, Romero, George Romero model will have three different types of people that are not susceptible and not zombie. They could be uh, dead, people who have died. They could be um, uh, uh, bitten people uh, who are now infected, um, for example. So um, the bitten people will turn into zombies eventually. After several hours, they tend to turn into zombies. So different possibilities there. We have di this differential equation that describes how these populations change, and here's um, how they change. I'll just explain each of those terms. Uh, first, we're going to assume that the um, that people have a constant birth rate B. That's this term right here. And we're also going to assume that um, some people die just of old age or some other disease, not because zombies bit them. And that's this term here, and you can see they get added to this category there. Um, we're also going to assume that some of these zombies um, are, uh, are created from dead people by being resurrected. Um, and so if you, um, you know, if you're a, one of these zombies that is resurrected from one of these uh, uh, dead people, then you get those terms there. And then there are some other terms that correspond to interactions. Um, there's this term here that corresponds to a person killing a zombie by shooting it in the brain. And so if you, um, if you so the, the people represented by S will interact with the zombies represented by Z um, roughly in proportion to the product SZ and that's that's where this inter this is called an interacting term and was there's some probability we'll call it alpha that these interact that uh, some of these interactions will result in a zombie being shot in the brain and uh, then they get put into this removed population. And likewise, there's a probability that a zombie uh, infects a person in terms of, and so when a zombie infects a person, then that, you know, they can, they, um, that, that, again, is kind of represented by this. So they bite the person, they get turned into a zombie here, and that removes them from this population. So it's a complicated system of, of differential equations, and it's nonlinear because of these uh, interaction terms. Well, the problem with it, uh, one problem with nonlinear means that the methods like the method of eigenvalues and eigenvectors and Laplace transforms that we looked at before, they do not apply in this nonlinear case, unfortunately. However, SAGE has some really excellent numerical approximation techniques. Uh, one of them is uh, called Runga Kutta. And that's specially designed to numerically solve a system of differential equations. Uh, again, you have to set this up very carefully. You have all your variables. Um, 
this case, we're going to mix our dependent and independent variables. Or just they're all going to be variables. So t is the independent variable here, of course, and s and z and r represent the <coughs> excuse me the dependent variables. And then we have these constants alpha, beta, zeta, delta, and b. And we're just going to set them equal to this just to get started and see what happens. Here's a uh, the system of differential equations, that's s prime, or z prime, and so on. And now we um, want to plot each one of those. We'll s solve numerically for s and z and r, and then we want to plot each one of those. This is the way you plot uh, a list of points that this, uh, that this uh, function returns here. We show them all on the same graph. Oh, I'm just remembering here for you what alpha and beta, and, and there's no birth rate here. So what do we get with these constants? Uh, here we are. You see uh, the red is the zombies. Uh, initially, the zombies were um, lower in population to the people, but the people die out very quickly. And the zombies are uh, basically winning the battle with the people here. That's not good. So let's try some different numbers. Let's. Uh, um, make this constant um, b a little bit different. The constant b represents uh, how many zombies infect people. So let's make b a little bit smaller, see what happens. And same system of differential equations, just slightly different uh, setup here. There's the new value of beta. And um, well, the zombies are kind of dying off as are the people, but the, this is still not a good situation. There are more zombies than people, and a lot of people are dying, so that's bad. So let's try this again. Let's make uh, beta even smaller. See what happens. Uh, okay, well, the zombies are dying off, and the people are also dying off, unfortunately. So that's still not good. You don't want the people to be dying off. But notice, we always had this birth rate to be zero, so let's change that. Okay, should try b equals two. All right, now, the zombies are dying off, and the death is kind of leveling off, it looks like, and people are surviving and growing, so that's good. So the moral of the story is that uh, you have to attack, and you also have to protect yourself from zombies and uh, reproduction is important also. <laughs> so, so that's uh, that's all there is for solving system of differential equations using Sage, and you can get Sage from SageMath.org.